There's a scene in this week's Torah portion, Genesis chapter 26, that cries out for more explanation. Isaac, Yitzchak, digs three wells. And we're told that his father Abraham, Avraham, had previously dug these wells, but that he plished them. The Philistines had filled them up. So Isaac redigs the three wells, and he gives them the exact same names that his father had given them, showing allegiance to his father's tradition. He calls the first one Asik, meaning dispute or argument. The second one he calls Sitna, meaning harassment. And the third one he calls Rehovot, meaning spacious. Why all the details about the wells and their names? The commentators tell us that these wells foreshadow the building of the holy temple in the future. So the first well was called Asek because after the first temple was built, we had disputes with our bitter enemies and they ended up destroying it. The second temple was called Sitna, harassment, because we had even more vicious enemies and they too destroyed the second temple. But the third temple was called Rehovot, spacious or expansive, because once that third temple is built, no one is going to be able to destroy it. Now, wells are a particularly apt analogy for the holy temple. Because when you build a well, it takes a lot of effort. You have to take your shovel, your spade, and dig that well. But then when you're done digging up all that earth, you put your shovel away, and then you don't have to worry any longer. You sit back and you wait for the rain to fill up the well. Similarly, when we built the first two temples, it took a lot of effort digging the foundations and laying those giant stones, but then we sat back and we waited for God's glory to fill them. But the analogy seems to break down when it comes to the third temple, because we're told by tradition that the third temple is going to be built by God himself. So that shouldn't require any exertion, shouldn't require any digging on our part, but it does. Because when God builds that third temple, he's going to use a very peculiar type of brick, a brick that is created in heaven each time one of us does a mitzvah, observes a commandment. Last week I was visiting a neighboring Jewish community and I was there late at night and I needed to pray the evening service, Marav. And so a friend of mine directed me to a local minion factory. For those who aren't familiar with the term, that is a synagogue that has a wide array of different services. So you can catch a morning service from just after dawn until late in the morning. You can pray an afternoon service from the beginning of the afternoon until just before sunset. And then you can pray the evening prayers from after sunset until late at night. So there I was late at night praying, and I couldn't help but notice that the table at which I was sitting was a modest folding table, but it had a plaque on it. And so did all the other folding tables in the synagogue, and each plaque said the name of the fellow who had donated the folding table. And I was thinking, what an awesome return on investment. That was like buying Apple stock 10 years ago. Each of these guys, for the price of a folding table, now has the merit every day of having hundreds of people, every week thousands of people, resting their prayer books on the folding table that they donated. If someone tells you that he's gotten an investment that will guarantee you yearly rates of return of 40 or 50 or 60 percent, you should probably tell him, no thank you, Mr. Madoff. But if God tells you he's got that kind of an investment, you should take him up on it. And he does. Every time you do a mitzvah, you observe a commandment, you're building a brick, a brick in heaven, a brick with your name on it, your family name on it, a brick that hopefully someday, speedily, in our days, will be used by God himself to rebuild the Holy Temple. Mm -hmm.